rich history of this place owes much to its geographical location. Located in the borderlands, the gateway from the Carpathian Mountains to the lowland plains, on the navigable Sand River, which of course created great trade opportunities. And that is why this town, Chemischl, grew up. I'm standing here in the Market Square in Chemischl at the beginning of our journey, a journey through history which takes us from the end of the Roman Empire to the end of the Second World War. A rich history of people, of buildings, of institutions. Join me on Poland Daily History as we see Chemischl above ground and below ground. We were speaking earlier, and of course, we were saying that the 16th and the 17th mm -hmm. centuries were pretty pleasant times here in Chemistle. But of course, all good things come to an end. And I, I think I'm right in saying that in the mid part of the uh, 17th century, other people started to attack the, the city. And I think the first to arrive were the, or to attempt to besiege the city were in fact the Swedes. Could you say something about the mm -hmm. Swedish siege of, of the city? Exactly, that's true. The 16th and 17th centuries were a wonderful time for the city and its inhabitants. It was a good time for those who lived in Przemyśl, not somewhere outside of it. Here, life was a bit different. However, the 17th century is in fact an unpleasant time when it comes to the invasions and sieges of the city of Przemyśl. Even before the Swedes, there was an interesting event. This is an event which is related to the history of Poland, the uprising of the Cossacks and the uprising of Bogdan Kmielnicki in the year 1648. In fact, the Cossacks were almost near Przemyśl. It can be said that they were separated from the city by two, three, four kilometers. They did not manage to enter the city thanks to the defense mechanisms, the ordinary residents, as well as the so-called regular army at the time. Regularnemu wojsku tak można to nazwać na na tamten czas. Bardzo dobrze tak udokumentowane właśnie rzeczy. Very well documented items associated with that period appear in the paintings of Marian Jerzy Fida, who mainly dealt with historical themes. He illustrated historical events, thanks to which we now can visualize more or less how everything looked back then. One example is the Swedish deluge, a very unpleasant period period, especially in the history of Poland, which tends to keep us up at night. To jest ten taki bardzo nieprzyjemny okres, szczególnie w historii Polski, który do dnia dzisiejszego no, spędza nam tutaj sens powiek przez te pięć lat od roku 1655 do 60 roku. For five years, from 1655 to 1660, they wreaked havoc on Polish lands and the deluge also reached Przemysl. Here, deluge is a very accurate term, as in 1655 Six, the Swedes are already at Przemyśl, yet they choose an unpleasant month to storm or besiege the city. They chose the month of March. Wrali go miesiącu marcu. Przeprawiając się przez rzekę San, no niestety potopili się. Whilst attempting to cross the river San, they unfortunately drowned as the ice on the river, which may have not been very thick, began to crack and break under pressure. That is why it is said the Swedish troops may have suffered the deluge. This caused great anger in the King of Sweden, Charles X Gustav, as this city could not be conquered. I suspect that he attacked Przemyśl because of the goods he owned in the 17th century. One year later, in 1657, there was an expedition in this area under George II Rakoczy, a prince who was the ruler of Transylvania. 
Ale pamiętajmy, że Przemyśl faktycznie jest otoczony murami miejskimi. Ma trzy bramy wjazdowe do Let us remember, however, that Przemyśl was surrounded by the city walls. There were these entry gates to the city, the Grodzka gate, the Lviv gate and the water gate, as well as having nine defense towers. Rakoci, who manages to reach the city walls, begins to plunder the Reformatów church. It was located outside the city walls, which made it a very easy target. Above all, it was most likely a wooden building, which allowed it to burn quickly. Rakoci broke onto this temple, he virtually plundered it from all valuables and and also desecrated corpses, for example, the burials of former monks. Pochówki dawnych tutaj pewnie zakonników. Według legendy, Rakoczy odstępuje od oblężenia miasta Przemyśl. According to the legend, Rakoczy withdrew from the siege of Przemyśl when the Franciscans in the neighboring church pulled out the relics of Saint Vincent of Saragossa, who was a Roman martyr from around the second century, and started to move towards the Watergate. This is when Rakoczy withdrew from the siege and set out on a further journey. However, after some examination, it turns out that Rakoczy did in fact receive contribution, a financial payment. Rakoczemu została wypłacona kontrybucja, czyli finansowa należność i wtedy Rakoczy postanowił jednak, że złupił, co miał złupić, jeszcze dostał dodatkowe fundusze. This in turn satisfied both him and Charles X Gustav, although they did not manage to conquer the city. This is due to the fact that the city walls were this great building surrounding the whole of the city. To this day, only two fragments of the walls remain. One is located at Basztowa Street. There you can see the largest fragment commemorating this building, which was unfortunately dismantled in the later years. Świetności, świetności tej właśnie budowli takiej fortyfikacyjnej, niestety rozbieranej już w późniejszym wieku. After the Swedes, there were some more attempts to, mm -hmm. well, the more actual besieging of the city. Could you say a bit, a bit more about this? Tak, wspominało się właśnie o tych najazdach. Yes, it was said about these invasions. The first Turkish invasion, the Tatar invasions, as well as the one near Kormanice. This is a town situated around 18 to 19 kilometers from Przemysl. It has a strong connection, as it holds a Fredro castle. Fredro was very much connected not only with Przemysl, but also with the towns that were close by. Gwardian father, Krystyn Szykowski, stood in the defense of the Przemysl lands, in defense of the areas of today's Przemysl powiat. He has a monument established at the front of the Church of Reformed Fathers. During the night, he, as well as the local population, surprised the sleeping units who were to attack the city of Przemyśl. Miejscową ludnością zaskoczył tutaj atakujące właśnie jednostki, czy śpiące sobie, chcące zaatakować właśnie miasto Przemyśl. Więc nie możemy też mówić tutaj o żadnym jakimś takim kunszcie wojennym. It cannot be said that any marshal or strategic strategic artistry was used, a simple moment of carelessness allowed the people to fight off one of the last attacks in the 17th century that were to take place on the city of Przemyśl. Let's also remember one important detail, the city's defensive features. For instance, the city walls were one thing, but the hills in Przemyśl could have served as observation points. A great example is the Tata Mount, which was typically used for exactly this. During this entire period, it could have served as a place from which units could have looked out for oncoming units from any side of the city. It is still, actually, one of the highest points in the city. Faktycznie z wyższych wzniesień miasta Przemyśla. So nobody really succeeded in taking the town. Yes, exactly. And so it was really, and, and after that series of uh, that series of, of, of sieges, which were thankfully not completely successful, life continued until we get, I suppose, to the general. We look in, in, ahead in, into Poland. This Georgia general, 18th century period in Polish history when things started to become a bit more um, disordered and you have this steady, sorry, not slightly disparaging of me to say so, this sort of steady decline mm -hmm. until you, you reach the circumstance of the, of the first partition of Poland. Uh, maybe that's something we look at, uh, we look at later, but that, that's very interesting. Thank you.